Hey, Desmond Du here from No Sleep Creative. Today we're gonna learn how to recreate this radio scaling grid chart from my friends JP's creativity video using a single expression. I hope you love the show today. Alright, let's get to the motion analysis. Let's take a look at the reference scene for the animation in real time and slower playback speed. What do you notice? There are three things to keep in mind. First of all, the array of these geometric shapes coming together into a grid. Secondly, to enhance the complexity of the animation, the shapes are also rotating as well. Lastly, to make the scene feel more alive, notice how the drop shadow distance increases and rotates in a clockwise direction. And with that, let's get on with the tutorial. Alright, let's first talk about how to import an Illustrator file into After Effects. For those who want to make their own designs, all you have to do is make sure each of your shape is in its own layer in Illustrator. And once you have that, you can go into After Effects and we can go into File, Import, File, and then select the Illustrator file. And I'm going to select that file and then click Import as Composition. Retain layer size and create a composition. So this will bring our layers from Illustrator into After Effects, and you can get uh, you can start animating from here. However, I'm gonna undo that because I already imported everything for you in this composition called 01 underscore start. So we can just uh, begin from here, and I'm just gonna duplicate this uh, this composition and call it demo, right? So I can retain the source. As you can see, I have animated the hero circle for you, so we can just focus on the radius scaling expression. And the first thing we're gonna do here is right click new now object, and we're gonna create call this now controls and go into my effects and preset panel and type in slider. So we're gonna drop this uh, create two controls for to connect to our drop shadow settings later. The second one will be an angle control. So make sure you have a space and you and then drop in the angle control. The first one, we're gonna call it shadow underscore distance. And the, the second one will be shadow underscore angle. So we won't be using this for now. Uh, we, it's just good to create it at the start. All right, next, I'm going to select all my uh, illustrator layers. I actually lock the background layers. And we're gonna select all the layers except the middle circle. And we are going to parent it to the control now layer and we can actually start animating. Uh, no, actually, we, we can't start animating yet because here's the problem that we have when we uh, scale in and out. Notice, even though we have this pushing in of the grid, right, the scale of our individual shape layers is uh, also increasing and decreasing. We want it to be constant, right? So to have this parent-child link without the scale change, we can write a simple expression into our, our Illustrator layers over here. So let's go into this layer four over here Option click on the stopwatch. So I'm gonna push this up a little bit higher and I'm gonna create a variable called PS for parent scale. So I'm gonna type in parent dot scale, a parent dot transform dot scale dot value semicolon. And then I'm gonna type in S is equals to, and then I'm just gonna grab the X value. Uh, and then, so I need to type in square bracket zero and then times 100 divided by ps oops divided by ps square bracket zero and make sure to close the square bracket and since the scale has two uh, is an array with two values make sure you uh type create an array and just type in s comma s all right you're going to get an error because i missed out a semicolon over here so when you're troubleshooting expression the first thing to do is always to make sure if you put in the semicolons and you know, hopefully that will solve all your problem. I'm gonna command, command C on the scale expression, and I'm just gonna command A to select all my layers, except the first three layers, and just command V to paste in all the expressions over here. And now when I, let me just move this, my timeline down. If I were to scale in my controls, you can see they're pushing in and out while retaining 
their size. So that's a pretty handy expression that you should uh, keep in mind or you know write it down so you don't forget it. Okay, and now we can start animating this shot. So let's open up the scale and also rotation. Hold on, sh uh, hold on shift and press R. And we're gonna set a keyframe down for about uh, frame 47, right? We're gonna set the scale to be about 625. So this will push the grid out until we can't see it. And we want the rotation to be at negative 90. And then it's gonna go down to about 100, frame 120. And this is where we scale it down back to 100 and we see the grid with the rotation back to zero. And then after that, we are going to animate out. So we're gonna go into reverse. We're doing, doing the same thing again. You can actually just copy the keyframes uh, and then just do negative 90. Uh, actually no, 90. So yeah, 625 to zero to 625 of the scale and rotation, it goes from negative 90 to zero to 90. Okay, so uh, let's play that. So it's mo moving kind of slow. Uh, so what we need to do is to select all the keyframe, keyframe assistant, easy ease, and see you know how that works. So that's looking better, but I want to slow down the part where we see the full grid. So let's select our scale property and open up the speed graph, right? So I'm gonna push this up again. And I'm just going to make this part, uh, this middle keyframe, a little bit uh, you know, flatter. So that might, and that should work. Let's play it. So there is that subtle hole for like a good two frames before it actually animates out. So I'm pretty satisfied with that. And I'm, I'm sure you guys can fine tune the keyframes uh, to perfection. And so we're done with animating, you know, the, the transform property of, the, of all the shape layers. Now we can do the drop shadow. So let's select our hero layer and let's go into the effects and preset panel and type in drop shadow. And we are going to you know, change the color of the drop shadow. So I have, a, I have a you know dark blue over here, set opacity to 100, option click on the direction because we're going to set expression, option click on the distance as well, and then select our now layer so we can get our sliders on the effects panel. Pick with the direction to the angle control and also pick with the distance to the shadow distance slider we created. And now we can close you know, our hero layer and we can actually uh, command C, this drop shadow, right? And then just command A to select all layers, deselect the first three layers and paste in our drop shadow effect. So everything's connected to this uh, control over here. And we can go to where our keyframes uh, first started, right? Around frame 47, set a keyframe down so the shadow distance will start at zero and I want the shadow angle to start at negative, uh, let's see, 100 will be good. Um, and then let's, as it goes down, right, we want to see the drop shadow. So let's make it more visible by 25 pixel and let's have it turn to about 135 degree, right? And when it animates out, I want it to rotate uh, clockwise again to about 330 so let's see 335 will be fine so let's play that so we're done with animating this shot from JP's creativity video and to take this technique to the next level I'm going to combine a script that I wrote that arranged layer radially to kind of you know enhance this shot a little bit more so uh, after an after effect script is a series of uh, instruction or action for you know the program to perform and uh, as for what, I, if you compare it to expression, an expression is more of like how things behave. You know, notice that we have like wiggle function or sine wave function. So again, think of a script as like a recipe for After Effects to just uh, just follow. I'm gonna duplicate this demo, this demo composition. So under demo two. So to run an After Effects script. So for the script that we're gonna run, first of all, we have to unparent uh, everything first. Uh, because uh, if we don't, we, if we don't do that, we'll mess up the position arrangement. So don't worry about the error message where we reparent everything back. Uh, it, the error message will be gone. So to run a script, go into script, and then we're gonna go run script file. And I have a bunch of uh, JavaScript uh, here, and the one that I've written is this 
uh, one called Position Random Radio, which you guys can download for free in the link in the description below. So it's going to ask you for numberings, so number of rings and the max radius of the of the rings. So uh, the first, so I'm going to let's just say I'm going to have four rings at about 800 pixel. Make sure you have the comma in between. Click OK. All right, you can see everything's arranged in in a radio pattern right here. I'm going to change the size of this composition to 1920 by 1920 so we can see the full radio arrangement. So that's looking pretty cool. And let's, but then it's kind of looking kind of busy as well. So I'm going to go again, run a script again, and then just uh, type in, have three rings at about 800 pixels. So, you know, you're going to get random uh, configuration uh, each time. So you have to keep running the script until you find uh, the perfect number or the perfect uh, configuration. In the future, I'll write a script UI to make, uh, uh, to make uh, our lives easier. But for now, uh, you can either access it through recent script file and then let's type in three comma 800. Uh, an alternative is uh, the shortcut command option shift D will re uh, repeat the last script. So I'm going to do three 800 again until I get a nice design. So that's looking pretty nice, but you might think to yourself like, okay, this, this shape is kind of out of place. I want to replace it. So let's select this, uh, this shape over here, this circle. And let's go into our Illustrator layer, and maybe I want to replace it with this, uh, let's see, this yellow circle over here. So you can hold down Option and just drag and, dr and drop onto the timeline, and you can see it has been replaced. So, yep, so that's, so you can, you know, you can still change the design even after the script. And so I'm, I'm okay with this. I'm going to select everything here, and then I am going to parent it back into my Control Now layer. And if I were to play it now, right? Now when I play this animation, notice how that we're still retaining, you know, all the animation that we made previously, even though we drastically changed the arrangement of our, you know, of our shape layers, right? So that's the beauty of, you know, having everything in this control now. Uh, it's kind of like a procedural way of working, you know, and it's easier for someone who opens a project file, they just need to find one layer to change everything. Finally, to enhance this shot with some subtle secondary motion, we're going to have the rotation of the layers point towards the center, and we can do that with an expression. So let's select one of our shape layer, option click on rotation, and you're going to paste in this expression I have on screen for you guys. So I'm going to lock the first three layers, and then command C on the rotation property with the expression, and command A, let me just pause it, pause the animation around here, command A, right, and then command V to paste all expression. You can see that our layer has is rotating in a circular fashion, pointing towards the center. And then let's play it. As you can see, it, with that subtle secondary motion, the shot feels a little bit more alive right now. And even though it might not be necessary for your project, but it's something that you can keep in mind for future ones. And that's it for this video. Like I said previously, you can download this project file and try it out for yourself. I also included my preview animation project file so you can reference my process. Thank you for watching this video. Please like, share, subscribe so this tutorial can get to more people. I hope you love this master study. As always, if you made something with this tutorial, please tag me on Instagram at ddesmondu because I'd love to see what you came up with on your own. Alright, that's all I have for you guys. I'll see you next time.